everybody, I'm Pauly G. Welcome back to the Pauly G Show, coming to you live from High Top Mount, Georgia. How are you all doing? So glad to be back here with you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're here today to talk about the Bernie Gold Top Les Paul style guitar. We'll call it that for now. We'll get into the actual model uh, later in the video. But if you saw my last video, uh, I went to London a few weeks ago and I had an opportunity to uh, tour Denmark Street and see all of the incredible guitar shops that were there. If you haven't seen that video, I would encourage you to rewind the tape, go back and check that out. Uh, in fact, check out all my videos. Well, you don't have to do that, but. But I would encourage you to see that one and check out Denmark Street. It's a it's a really, really cool place. A lot of uh, incredible guitar shops there. So anyway, uh, I was on Denmark Street in my last afternoon in London. And I was uh, in a shop called No Toms. Uh, shout out to my friend Ron over at No Toms. They're great people over there. I love that place. Uh, anyway, they had some incredible vintage you know, guitars. A lot of USA stuff. Stuff I hadn't even don't even see in the U.S. So I, I don't know where they find these things. But anyway, uh, I really hadn't planned on buying anything for a variety of reasons. One is that, you know, vintage guitars are really expensive. Uh, and I really didn't plan on spending that kind of money while I was there. Uh, also, right now, uh, the exchange rate uh, for the dollar, the dollar is really weak uh, over in Europe. I mean, it's weak here, right? I mean, if you don't believe me, go to the supermarket or your local gas station. You'll see how weak your dollar is. But uh, the exchange rate is really unfavorable right now against the British pound. So, uh, you know, for all those reasons, uh, plus I had to get on a plane and fly home. And it's kind of hard to travel with a really, really super high quality guitar. It's kind of dangerous, you know. So for all those reasons, I really hadn't planned on buying anything. But uh, I was making my last pass through uh, No Toms, and right by the door, what before my eyes should be, but this interesting looking gold top with P90. So that catches my eye right off the bat. And at first glance, of course, I assumed it was a Gibson. I didn't know what year or anything, but it caught my eye. And then I took a closer look at the headstock, and I realized... It's just not a Gibson at all. It's a Bernie. What's a Bernie? Well, uh, I asked uh, Ron, the shop owner there at No Toms, and he gave me some background information on it. And I saw the price, which was far less than what you would expect to pay for, you know, a high quality Gibson gold top with P90s. I have one of those. It's a great guitar, but costs a lot of money. Uh, but he gave me a little bit of background information and I saw the price and I picked it up and plugged it in and it just had that P90 beautiful tone that I love so much uh, that, you know, I just all of a sudden the possibilities of buying it started to open up, you know. Uh, so Ron, you know, said to me, well, gee, you know, I could knock a few pounds off the price for you. Uh, and I said, well, you know, that's great, but, you know, I've got to get on a plane tomorrow morning. And he said, well, I'll tell you what, for a little bit extra money, I'll throw in uh, a proper flight case for you and you can fly it home. So there we go. <laughs> so that's that's what we did. And uh, a, a quick, interesting story. I checked the guitar at Heathrow, had a direct flight to Boston Got to Boston, got through customs, and went down to baggage claim to find this beautiful guitar and uh, waited and waited and waited at the carousel and it just didn't show up. And I thought, oh boy, what are we going to do now? You know, uh, so I was the last man standing at the baggage claim. Everyone had gotten their bags but me. So I went over to the assistance desk there and I said you know I checked the guitar at Heathrow it was a direct flight here you know where could it be and they said oh no 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 we don't put guitars in with the regular luggage it's over there in special handling down the hall it's waiting for you well 
That made me very, very happy. So it got home in one piece, and I'm really glad it did. So a little bit of background on these Bernies, and, and I don't know that much about them even, even still, but my somewhat limited research tells me that the Fernandez Guitar Company started these Gibson and Fender, you know, uh, mock-ups uh, in the early 70s or maybe mid-70s. Uh, they used to be built in Japan, and they were highly sought after because the quality was really supreme even then. Uh, similar to, some of you may have heard of the brand Tokai. Uh, Tokai used to make a Les Paul that was famously uh, shut down by Gibson because it was so great. People really, really were buying these up like crazy, and it was uh, you know, putting a little bit of a hurt on Gibson. So those Tokai Love Rocks, my brother Robbie used to have one. Uh, if you can find one of those at a reasonable price, buy it. But Bernie is another, you know, brand name that, you know, is designed to, you know, look very much like uh, a Gibson Les Paul at a much more affordable price. Uh, so the actual model, this is where it gets a little weird. The actual model, as you'll see by the photo I'm about to show you, is the Bernie Looper Prade model. Now, as you'll see from the logo... It's designed to look like Les Paul, and I think they wanted it to maybe kind of say super grade, but that's not what it says. It says Looper Prayed. What is Looper Prayed? I have no idea. Whatever. I don't really care. <laughs> the important thing is it doesn't say Gibson. There's no copyright you know, concerns like you would have if you bought a Chibson that had, you know, made in USA on it and all those things that they do. Uh, but no, this is a legitimate guitar. I've never seen one before in the USA. And a quick search on the internet that shows me that there's none for sale in the USA, at least not that I could see. Uh, so, you know, these are more of a British thing, I think, maybe in a way. I don't know why. Uh, kind of like how you see a lot more Rickenbackers over in England than you do here in the USA. They really focus their marketing a lot. I know in the 60s and 70s uh, on the British market, maybe more so than the USA. Not really sure why. But uh, anyway, it's an awesome guitar. The the pickups on it, uh, now in the uh, doing some research, I saw that in the 70s, some of these even had Gibson pickups. I don't know where they got them from, but when they were making them in Japan, at some point, they got a hold of some actual Gibson pickups and they were using them. I took these out to check. I was kind of hoping that would be true here. Uh, they're not. So these are made by some factory that's owned by Fernandez. I know not where. I know the overall guitar, uh, from what I can see, was built in Taiwan. Uh, so that's kind of what my research is telling me that they're, uh, the Bernies now are being built in J China and or uh, Taiwan. So, so that's where this one you know came from. But you know it plays amazing. It's got a really really cool uh, feel to it. The neck is a kind of a '50s chunky neck. Uh, the back is uh, it looks it'll look black here, but it's it's not black. It's just like a dark brown paint uh and then of course the the gold top but all the inlay work the binding is absolutely perfect the controls work really well but the most important thing is these uh i love these p90 pickups i love the warmness of that front you know that neck pickup and then you can really get you know the bridge to bark you know the way you want a p90 to bark so i i love p90s you know i'm a p90 guy i'm guilty so, you know, just wanted to give you the story behind this one. If you see a Bernie around, you know, give it a chance. You may, uh, you may fall in love with one of these. You never know. Uh, that's about uh, all I've got for now. Uh, I've got some travel coming up. I'm going to be uh, heading over to Germany very soon. So I may not be uh, making uh, too much content uh, from over there. And I certainly don't plan on buying any guitars while I'm in Germany, unless I see a great deal 
on a Duesenberg. Now those are great, great guitars. So who knows what can happen? I, I will make no predictions. But anyway, thanks as always for tuning in. So great to be with you. And until next time, this is Pauly G reminding you that when it comes to guitars, you only need one. More. See you next time.